Recently, I've been playing Bayonetta 1 on my Wii U. Seeing as how my first few play sessions of Bayo 1 were on the PlayStation 3 in all of its beautiful slideshow glory, I didn't finish it. However, now that I have a functional version of the game, I've been playing it through to completion, and if there was one serious complaint that I would level against the game, it would be the controls. In a conversation with Pokey, we joked about the scenario that customizable controls aren't just a standard option in games. It was a joke then, but it got me thinking about why customizable controls are such a positive thing now. First, let me begin with a practical exercise, something that I would like you, as the viewer, to participate in as well. Find your preferred input device for a video game, preferably a controller as it will illustrate the point most clearly. Now here's how this works. I'm going to say a word, it's going to be an action that a character in a video game would take. When you hear this word, press the button on your controller that you think corresponds to that action. The game is irrelevant, in fact let's take the gameplay down, you don't need it, this is between you and me. Are you ready? Just once again, simple, word, button, go. Guard. Did you do it? Please tell me you did it, it would have been horribly awkward if I was the only one to do it. I feel like a bit of an I'm just holding this controller, there's no game. Now what button did you press? Myself personally, I press square. I press square for two main reasons. Primarily, square is the button that the guard command was mapped to for many of the Kingdom Hearts games, a franchise that I have an extensive history with. Square is also the button that Trickster Dash and Royal Guard is mapped to in my Devil May Cry 3 and 4 control schemes, but even this is a product of my history with Kingdom Hearts. I imagine that many of you viewers pressed radically different buttons. This is to be expected, as I'm relatively certain that we each have our own unique biases that are the results of years of playing specific games. Button mapping is an extremely important part of game development, much more so than I think many really consider. Games, at their core, are interactive by nature. As such, the means by which the player interacts with the game need to be thought of carefully. This happens, of course, on multiple levels. First being the design of the controller itself, and the usage of specific buttons in mapping second. Unfortunately, methods of controlling video games purely with thought are either not existent or not ready for mainstream use. As such, controllers are a necessary part of having influence in the medium. With all the talk in recent years of games needing to be more accessible, especially from developers, it's odd that games are still lacking such a basic feature en masse. It stands to reason that if a player is able to make comprehensive changes to a control scheme that is either obtuse or illogical to them, then they'll be able to get into games much more easily. A large amount of the focus of making games more accessible seems to be in the learning phase, where the player has the smallest amount of contextual knowledge about how to play the game or where the buttons are. Having the option to change a relatively universal feature of most games of a particular genre, like a basic melee button in a beat-em-up, to a more comfortable button would go a long way to getting more players into new experiences, which is the goal of a lot of these accessibility concessions in the first place. Myself personally, I've always just had a tendency of being able to wrap my head around a button layout that was even slightly more familiar to me than one that was completely alien. Moving beyond simple accessibility concerns, I found that custom controls have a tendency of making me come back for repeated sessions with games. The reason is simple. It's much more palatable for me to return to a game where either the control scheme is comfortable or familiar, or where I don't have to make many adjustments to return to playing the game than when I do. I can't be the only one who dislikes it when established muscle memory contradicts a mandatory button layout for a game. Returning to the discussion about player interactions and the implications thereof, custom control schemes can also help engender play styles unique to that layout. Once again using myself as an example, when I played Double May Cry 4 more frequently, my Nero gameplay tended towards much more fluid and comfortable use of charge shots than many other players who use the default controls. This was because I mapped the shoot command to L1 rather than the default square. This also pushed me to buffer many attacks out of regular shots, making reversals a more frequent part of my gameplay. This is far from the only game where I take this approach when possible. Rayman Legends is a game that gives me this option, and I've used it to move Murphy to L1, making interacting with certain segments of the environment completely dependent on my left index finger. I've also moved Jump to Circle and kept Melee on Square, meaning that I can use a spin jump whilst moving through obstacles that only Murphy can interact with at the same time. It's little things like this that allow players to expand on what's possible within every minuscule second of gameplay. This is for an interactive medium, wherein player input is the connection between player and game, especially considering gameplay is usually at its best when players can be expressive with it. 
Of course, it's fair to point out that some games are designed around their default control schemes quite extensively, Resident Evil being a great example. With combat de-emphasized in favor of survival, the default control scheme for the old Resident Evil titles is horribly awkward for me, making combat quite the non-option. Alternatively, with the HD remake available on Steam with some updated control scheme types, I engage in combat much more frequently and successfully as a result of the options. However, I feel as though the option to change the control layout to one more natural doesn't diminish the effect the controls were meant to instill, since the aiming and mobility isn't nearly as smooth as later installments in the franchise. As such, I find it disingenuous to say that a game's presumed vision should trump player preference when it comes to control scheming. Continuing on with the sentiment of developer vision in games, it's arguable that custom control schemes could go a long way to improve and maintain player immersion in a game as well. If the goal of immersion in games is to cause players to act and think as though they are in the world of the game itself, nothing could ruin it more in an interactive sense than the recognition of the controller. Immersion has many things that need to be created and maintained in order for it to exist in games. Atmosphere and consistency need to be present within the world, and if it's effective, then the player can start to think in a one-to-one -one fashion, where their thoughts and actions represented in-game by their character. Many things can and have shattered this immersion in games for me, but more often than glitches or invisible walls, it's the reminder that I'm holding a controller that breaks me out of the experience. Another anecdotal scenario I could provide is this. What is the difference between seeing an enemy prepare an attack and A, dodging, or B, pressing ZR to dodge? The difference is the acknowledgement of the controller in the exchange. It's difficult to describe with words, but quite often during my time with Bayonetta's 1 and 2, I would keep needing to remind myself of where the dodge button was. This scenario was a far cry off of when I would simply dodge an attack with dodge roll in Kingdom Hearts or Trickster Dash in DMC without even needing to think of what button to press. In fact, I've become so comfortable with many of the inputs and the layout of these two franchises that if you were to corner me on the street and ask me what the input for, say, Stinger, or entering limit form was, I would have to think for a few moments, likely doing the motions with my fingers before I could give a legitimate answer. It's this type of one-to-one -one play wherein your thoughts translate directly into the actions of the character with no attention paid to the controller that's a true rarity in games for me. And it's frustrating to think, looking back on my playtime in Bayonetta's 1 and 2, how easily this could have happened. On a side note, it may sound odd, but it's true enough that gamers with certain types of disabilities could be able to play games more comfortably with the help of a custom control scheme. A perfect example of this would be fighting game legend Broly Legs. I'll use this clip from Cross Counter TV to explain how Broly uses the custom control scheme options of Street Fighter 4 to give him an opportunity to play Street Fighter on a competitive level. The reason why I use Chun, I tried out a lot of characters, but I picked Chun because I only use four buttons on, on the pad. Now I use, and I'll, I'll explain it. I have X to throw, Y to middle punch, and then A is the three kicks, and B is the three punches. Now what, I, what happens is that there's option selects within the buttons to where if you do crouching throw, you do light kick. If you do light kick to the three punches, it comes out of the jab. So I can actually do her five hit combo with just four buttons. And uh, I use the back trigger for her focus attack. And basically it's all easy. I mean, I'm, most of my attacks are all EX attacks, but I do limit it. I do know how to use it well. And it's just her poke range and everything. That, that, that's why I could use, bi I'm basically a charge player. Like I could use charge characters. I could use Guy, I could use Bison, I could use Chun, but I'm, I main Chun. I mained her back then and uh, in vanilla and then I main her now. With an immense amount of dedication, skill, a usable control scheme and an open approach to the mechanics, he performs amazing feats, giving him the opportunity to be the competitive monster that he is. It may sound odd that I'm singling them out here, but Platinum Games seems to have quite the problem with this themselves. In all of the games that they have released, I can't think of a single one that has a legit controller options menu. If anything, many developers are in a habit of adding in secondary control schemes that are also pre-made. These pose the exact same problems as having a single, universal scheme for a game. If the developers acknowledge that some players aren't going to be happy with the default control scheme, then why give us an illegitimate workaround? 
You've already taken the baby steps to alleviate this problem, but if it's worth doing, it's worth doing properly and fully. This is an issue that transcends a single genre. Every game is different and the ways that some players think of certain mappings in relations to each other needs to be taken into account. I'd say it's impossible to have a single configuration that appeals to everyone. I'd also say that it's pretty bold to suggest that developers know better than the player when it comes to what feels natural and comfortable for them. I shouldn't even have to say this, but somehow I know someone will defend this laziness by saying this is some sort of anti-console bias or something. But just like games running at consistently high frame rates dating all the way back to the SNES, custom control schemes have been a part of the console game experience for years now. If nothing else off the top of my head, I could point to the PS2 version of Devil May Cry 3. Custom button mapping present in a great game, and I'm certain it goes back even further than that. Even though custom control schemes should just be a common courtesy at this point, it's still puzzling to think that this isn't just a standard with every game that comes out now. The benefits are so clear and desirable that it makes me wonder why developers seem content to just kick down a series of prefab control schemes if they give any options at all. As time moves forward in the generations, this really should be more of a common thing than it is. Of the four games I'm currently working on projects for, only one of them has rebindable controls. It's funny to note that in a recent firmware update for the PlayStation 4, DualShock 4 button remapping was a new feature. This is a great step forward for PlayStation 4 owners, but it's far from an ideal solution since the remapping occurs on a hardware level rather than on a software level. The equivalent for me would be to manually change the drivers on my computer. The problem with this is that QTE-centric games like The Order 1886, for example, have the potential for their prompts to go through two separate filters prior to an input being given. If a player remaps cross to circle and vice versa, then a QTE prompt that comes up as cross has to be first interpreted as cross, then ran through the button remapping in the player's head to mean that the QTE actually requires the player to press circle. This is to say nothing of menu confusions or conflicting tutorials when a button appears on screen detailing an action, only for it to mean a different button entirely. It's a good gesture by Sony, but the fact that action had to be taken on an OS level tells me that something is still very wrong. I reiterate, but games are interactive, and each player is going to be different in some small way, and acknowledging this is only going to help your games. Custom control schemes likely don't take too many resources to implement, about as many as some of the other functions in the typical options menu. It seems quite backwards, and ironic in this case, that a lot of my problems with forced non-customizable control schemes stems from a franchise that never really had any itself. But I know I'm not alone in asking for this, so the next time a developer talks about making a game more accessible or more immersive, it might be worth it to make sure that they don't overlook the controller options. My name has been Vash TSB, and I'll see you guys soon.